Now, we all think that um, Alzheimer's is a brain problem that starts in the brain, right? It starts in the brain and then it develops in the brain and it's not connected to any other part. But I found some real interesting data that shows that Alzheimer's actually originates in your liver. The liver has a function of clearing out something called amyloid B plaques. And so the liver should normally clear this out so it doesn't spread into other parts of your body. But when the liver is compromised and it can't do that, whether you have a fatty liver, you have cirrhosis, you have inflammation, you have diabetes, you have metabolic syndrome, whatever, then the liver is gonna have a very, very hard time getting rid of that placking. And then it starts developing in the brain, but you, you won't have symptoms for roughly about 20 years. Then you start getting the dementia. So it's a process. And the problem is that a lot of times people are waiting until they get a symptom before they do anything about it. But I wanna emphasize this very, very important connection that you need to know about, especially if you wanna prevent Alzheimer's. So what can you do? Well, number one, take care of your liver, right? I have a lot of videos on this. I'll put some links down below. Very, very important. But let's say, for example, you're already starting to get dementia. You start going in a room and you can't quite remember why you went in there and you start losing your keys and you just start having memory loss. You're getting a little bit older and you're concerned. Um, what you need to do is start to support your liver immediately. Well, there's a couple things you can do. There's actually four really important things to do. And so these few articles down below cover these points. And I think it's actually quite fascinating. Bile salts. Uh, specifically uh, a type of biosalt called Tudka uh, has the ability to decrease amyloid placking and amyloid clearing in the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain that um, is involved with um, the relay to your database or, or remembering certain things, especially spatial memory. And by the way, if you go on a low fat diet, your bile salts dry up. Also, if you destroy your gut, um, you're not going to be able to make bile salts because your body makes secondary bile salts from the microbes in your gut. That's one of the reasons why there's a big connection between your gut and your brain. What's going on down here is affecting up here. Number two, vitamin D. And by the way, if you don't have bile salts or not enough bile salts, you're not going to be able to absorb vitamin D. So there's a big connection between vitamin D and clearing out amyloid placking. Also, vitamin D is very, very important in the liver. And the liver is part of the uh, process where the uh, vitamin D gets activated. It's also an organ that you help store vitamin D, but vitamin D is very, very important. All right, number three, silymarin. That's milk thistle, has the capacity to clear out amyloid placking. So if you're getting dementia or you have Alzheimer's, you should be taking all of these, including the next point, which is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting helps clear out the amyloid placking. Why? Because your body starts to perform autophagy, which is a recycling of proteins that you don't need. And you'd have to do at least 18 hours of fasting to get into autophagy, but very, very important if you want to clear out these proteins. All right. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about the three fats that have the potential to reverse a fatty liver. So many people are freaked out about fat and they have this thing in their mind that if they eat any fat at all, they're going to get a fatty liver. But in reality, what causes fatty liver is more of the carbohydrates that are converting to fat. But there are three fats that you can start consuming in larger amounts that will help reverse a fatty liver. And I'm going to put some links down below for each one. Number one, olive oil. Olive oil is an omega-9 fatty acid. It's anti-inflammatory, and it's highly beneficial to support a fatty liver. Don't worry about the calories from olive oil or trying to have just a little bit. Uh, use a good amount of it. There's a lot of other benefits to olive oil, and I'll put a link down below, but I would recommend organic and extra virgin olive oil being the best. All right, number two, fish oils. And I'm talking about wild-caught fish oils. You can also do cod liver oil, rich in omega-3. Fish oils inhibit fat from accumulating on the liver, and it can actually help reduce the fat in your liver as well. It's highly anti-inflammatory. It's also good for the retina. It's good for the heart, and it's definitely good for your brain. So make sure that you start consuming fish at least two to three times a week, but make sure it's the fatty fish as well 
and it wouldn't hurt to find a high quality fish oil or a cod liver oil. All right, last one is the virgin coconut oil can help reverse a fatty liver in rat studies. Now there's not any human studies, but if you have a pet rat that has a fatty liver, start feeding them some coconut oil, make sure it's virgin. Now there's some other things you can do to reduce fat on the liver. And by the way, having a fatty liver is very, very common. One way to know that you have it is just to look down. If you have a gut, you have a fatty liver. But even if you don't have a gut and you're doing a high carbohydrate diet, um, the fat is around the organs. You can't quite see them sometimes. And it's definitely going to be crammed up inside the liver. There's some other things you can do. Purified bile uh, salts is a really good remedy for a fatty liver. You would take uh, one tablet after a meal. Number two, choline. Excellent fat-soluble um, nutrient that can help strip fat off the liver. Also, cutting your carbs down, and I'm talking about sugar, and especially fructose, because there's nothing that will fatten up a liver faster than fructose. Okay, number four, fasting. What happens when you fast, both intermittently and periodic prolonged fasting, is that you give your body a chance to reduce insulin, and the body will then start to go after fat reserves in your liver and turn that into ketones. So it'll start to tap in to the fat reserve finally because you're not stimulating uh, insulin. And then the amount of fat will get less and less and less. So fasting is essential if you are really serious about getting rid of that fat in your liver. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.